long life. Long life. Everybody looks for long life. Everybody. The other day I was reading somewhere and it was said there that the scientists are trying to put a nail to make sure they got a way around death. That if they did, people could live up to 1,000 years. And the rich are now buying fridge, hoping to, in case they die before that time, they could be frozen in that fridge, like you froze, you freeze, you, 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 we, we, we froze, we freeze, like we freeze fish, so that that remedy could be given to them, which will bring them back to life. Well, I am not disputing the fact that they could do that, because the book of Revelation talked about the time when somebody that was dead would be brought back to life. What I want to warn the scientists is that though I respect them and I thank God for them, at least there are drugs they have made and have eaten, have taken, who which have, have healed me. If they are trying to do that, what they are trying to do is to bring to come to pass what was said and is said in Revelation where they will bring back somebody who has died and they will boast about it. May they beware of that. The only thing that can give you long life is not so much in medicine. Yes, medicine is good. At the age of 40, everybody asks to start going for checkup. It is believed scientifically that when you go for checkup, it is believed scientifically that at the age of 40, people start deteriorating. And you need medicine to get you strong. Take vitamins, supplements, and it gives you back your power. I know for an extent, humanly speaking, that is okay. But that cannot give you long life. It can never give you long life. In those days, in the days of Genesis 1 to Genesis 12, people were living hundreds of years. Today, when somebody dies at the age of 50, they give thanksgiving that he has lived long. It's a shame that that is what we can boast of. I am not saying that people can die young. There are a lot of holy people that died young. Jesus Christ, even during the time of Genesis 1 to 12, people who knew God, like Enoch, died younger than other people. However, they, sorry, they didn't die. They were taken away by God Almighty. Therefore, somebody that knows God could still die. Jesus died at 33. People could still die, not because they're sinners. People could still live long. But I'm trying to talk about what gives us long life? What gives us long life? And that was what gave long life to people in those days, was the Holy Spirit. At a stage, probably in Genesis 6, God says He wasn't going to take it no more. That He could, the Spirit can't live with man. So He was going to take away Spirit. It was at that point that He said people start living 120. Understanding the significance of the Holy Spirit in prolonging life. People like David wrote in Psalms 51 that God should never take away their spirit from them. Because with the Spirit of God, there is no fear, no worry. The question of the question of hypertension is ruled out. With the Holy Spirit, you won't desire sex to a point that you will end up with any sexually related disease, let alone die. Therefore, the Holy Spirit in us is what sustains us. When we have the Holy Spirit, we can live longer than we ever expect. However, people grieve the Holy Spirit. They so grieve the Holy Spirit that even when He leaves them, they do not know. People like Samson, when they disobeyed God, and disobeying God is one of the ways through which the Holy Spirit can depart somebody. By telling, revealing, what God said is not revealed to any other person. The Spirit left him. And he felt he could still stand up and do what he was doing. In that same manner, the Holy Spirit leaves Christians. And they still feel God is with them. And they could still do the things that God expects them. And they will only stand up to discover that they can't conquer Satan. As the Holy Spirit has left them. Another thing that can make you 
to lose the Holy Spirit. It's daring to walk with those that do not love the Lord. Joking with unbelievers. When I talk about unbelievers here, I'm not talking about you are a Christian, so you are a believer. You are a Muslim, so you are a believer. You are, you are a Muslim, so you are not a believer. No. Believers are those who are known and who have taken, make up their mind to do the will of the Father. These are the people that are called believers. Anybody who does not do the will of the Father and decide to hang around such person, knowing it very well, you are going to be destroyed. Psalms 1 says, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Do not... He, he talked about never warning us talk about circumstances, situations where when we dine with the unbeliever, that is the person that does not do what God says he should do. We end up dying. Cain was an unbeliever as far as his actions were concerned. When God said he should do, give sacrifice. He didn't do it the way God wanted him. And when God said he should change and do it again, he could not just do it. He just had hatred for his own brother in his own mind. Loying the brother until he killed him. When you find yourself fellowship with, fellowshipping with non-believers, whom are not ready to change, they will, one way or the other, lead you to your grave. If you are a wise person, Anyone that you know knows God and refuse to do the will of God. We're not talking about people that are yet to know God. This is for such persons. Because continuing with such people will eventually lead you to destruction. Another person who died in such, who almost lost his life in such circumstances was a King Joseph when he went to Ahab. And Ahab was warned never to go to a war. But because Joseph was an in law to Ahab, he allowed himself to be dragged into a war that he shouldn't. Almost lost his life until he called upon Jesus Christ. On getting back, an end, a prophet warned him on why he went to a war with somebody that God has refused. When you know that God has refused somebody, and such people you know by the way they act, by the way they know the word of God, yet they decide not to do the word. If you continue with them, I can assure you, my brethren, you will lose your life. It was wickedness that got God to take away spirit from the people of those days before destroying the first world during the days of Noah. Wickedness too is one thing that can make you not to live long in life. However, with the Holy Spirit in you, submitting to his leadership through Christ Jesus who strengthens you, you will never find yourself doing any act of wickedness that will leave the Holy Spirit to leave you. And when you die with the Holy Spirit, be rest assured, your name is written in the book and you will definitely make heaven. Father God Almighty, we thank you so much for telling us that all we need to do in order for us to have long life, not here on earth, this dispensation, but even after this life, is merely nothing but having the Holy Spirit. If we want long life as prosperity, let us ask God for the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to live the life that God wants us. With the Holy Spirit, we become pure and righteous. With the Holy Spirit, we glorify God. Father God Almighty, thank you because you had a prayer. We are not asking you for anything. Not because of the fact that we are asking, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Give us the Holy Spirit. Give us the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit lead us. Not only this 2015, but lead us until we meet you face to face. This we ask you. And we know what we ask you is your will. And when people pray according to your will, we grant them. Grant us the Holy Spirit that from now on we will be so revived. So much so that we will never go back the old way. Because we have asked you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for having heard our prayers. And thank you, Father, for giving us the Holy Spirit right now and forever. We believe the Holy Spirit will never leave us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.